Hi, this is Jeremy Bryden for Core S Squared Software Solutions. Today we'll be talking about our NSP solution, uh, our Nurse Scheduling Program solution, which was designed for the software development course taught here at the Pennsylvania State University. So the premise of the problem is, is that we have to create an application that could be used either through a web interface or through a standard desktop application that could go ahead and take in user information, group information, as well as schedule requirements. And from there, an administrator can actually generate a schedule for nurses to be assigned to. Our application is a standard Java, Java desktop application that does client-server interfacing. Our server is currently located on my own personal server, which is located in California, that's running uh, the server process as well as the MySQL database that contains all of the relevant user information and some other bits of information related to actually solving the problem. So here I'm making sure that the server is running, and I'm going to go ahead and start the application. Our IDE was NetBeans, uh, simply chosen because it gave us the, the greatest access to simple features out of the box without us doing any sort of complex setup. So in front of you, you actually see the application. We could go ahead and log in using my credentials. Uh, everything from now on is encrypted. Every time you send any sort of information to the server or receive information from the server, it's fully encrypted. Uh, as well as the passwords and any other sensitive information on the database is also encrypted. So, for example, the passwords are hashed using assault uh, and encrypted through uh, SHA-1. So, as an administrator, you could go ahead and access all of the major features of our application. If you click Users, you could go ahead and learn more about fields that you could fill out. All of these fields have uh, help text, so if you go ahead and hover over any of them, you'll go ahead and see, for example, we have a description of relation here, and that says relationship of the emergency contact uh, listed for this new user. We've also added a miscellaneous notes field, so if an administrator wants to explain this is a sample account, uh, they could go ahead and type that out, and when they hit add user, it goes ahead and adds them. You'll note that we do form verification before it sends to the user, and we've also integrated J Calendar so that you could select dates. Also note that in certain fields, you could only put in acceptable characters. For example, in phone numbers, if I were to actually press any of the uh, standard keyboard buttons, they actually wouldn't put in anything. It just only accepts digits. From here, we could go ahead and modify users. Go ahead and just select a user, change any of their fields, uh, and from there, just commit the changes if you'd like. You could also remove a user, and you could also select the preferences for the user. The preferences is simply a filter uh, that suggests to our scheduling algorithm which users would prefer which times. So if a user would really only prefer to work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays from a certain hour to another hour, they could go ahead and specify that pattern and then add the shift. From there, you could add other shifts. So if you don't get your Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday preference, you could go ahead and get your Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday preference change your hours accordingly, and add the shift. From there, uh, users can be organized as a set of groups. Creating a group is as simple as putting in a group name and a group description. Modifying them, go ahead and select a group. You'll see that I selected the group name called Randoms. And all you have to do is just select a user on the left, hit the Add User button, and it gets uh, to be added to the right pane. You could also view some of the user's information below. Uh, so that way it's easier to identify which users. And you might be using this to go ahead and segregate uh, groups into certain levels of education, or you could go ahead and create groups with a certain level of qualifications or requirements. It's up to the administrator to choose that. And of course, every time you add a group, you also have the ability to delete that group. So the core of our solution was to go ahead and generate a or generate a schedule based on something what we call the MPI algorithm, meaning the Master um, Preference Index System. The idea is, is that for every schedule we're trying to fill out, we go ahead and generate an MPI, so this integer value, representing uh, how likely or how best fit a specific nurse would be in that position. So every time we plan a schedule, you go ahead and can input certain amounts of fields. You could default a user, uh, or you could leave it blank if you want our engine to choose that. Go ahead and select the date that they'll be working, the start time, end times, and then also any number of qualifications that you'd like. Uh, as an administrator, sometimes you need to set up users that 
or excuse me, you need to set up certain shifts that require certain qualifications. Uh, and you could go ahead and do that as well as you could uh, create complex requirements so that you could add certain qualifications while others are optional. And all of that is done by changing the, uh, the options on the side. Also, once you have all of your uh, planned shifts done, if you would like to generate them, all you have to do is click the Generate Now button. If we actually tab back into NetBeans, there's an output from the Schedule Generation System. Right now what it's doing is it's pre-computing all of these MPIs. So again, for each schedule and for each nurse, there's a specific MPI generated. From there, we go ahead and sort all of these nurses. So the nurses that are best fit are put on the top and nurses that are least fit are placed on the bottom. And we simply start sorting them out and we place nurses based on uh, the highest value. Once a nurse is placed in a specific position, that nurse cannot be used uh, based on two conditional checks. The first is whether or not that time that the nurse is being uh, assigned to conflicts with another assignment. So for example, a nurse can't work at the same time as they're already working. And the second condition or rules set up by the administrator, such as nurses can't work more than 20 continuous hours. Uh, and all of that is modifiable on the um, settings pane, which I'll show you in a, a minute. Also, just wanted to note, uh, the computation for our MPI system is actually very, very quick. Uh, we were expecting it to take hours to compute, you know, 10 nurses with a dozen shifts. And actually, it turns out it computes very quickly. Uh, just in the time span that I've talked, it's already been done. So unfortunately, we have a rendering glitch. Our table's not rendering uh, as the way we want it. But you can see on the bottom here that we have Chris Todd, one of our developers who we uh, created an account for, has actually been correctly assigned for uh, some specific times. So here on the bottom we have uh, the assignments. Chris Todd will be working November 8th from 9 to 17. Uh, all of this is 24 hour based. Uh, another account, Mike uh, Piaruli, is being uh, assigned correctly. And from there, you can add any number of new nurses and everything changes dynamically. Uh, all future schedules are generated using the existing schedule, but with slight mutations. What that means is for the next two or three weeks, uh, we'll take the existing schedule and we'll go ahead and randomize some of the, the high-level high MPIs to make sure that nurses are evenly spread throughout and that they're well distributed. Uh, the idea is, is that if we assign the same nurse over and over again, obviously they'll be used too often. It'll conflict with certain rules that the administrator can set up. So we try to change them around uh, to balance things out. So in front of us, we see the rules pane. You could go ahead and change the maximum hours a user uh, is allowed to work. You could go ahead and say whether or not there will be a warning to the administrator if a nurse is never used at all during this week. Uh, you could also get certain warnings for other aspects, and you could also set up other um, maximum hours for different aspects. Finally, there's a settings tab. We know that one of the biggest dangers of a client-server model is, is that what happens if the server goes down. With our implementation, what happens is if the server doesn't respond after a certain amount of time, we go ahead and give up trying to connect to that, and we try another. And this is all saved in the IP list. Any user is able to go ahead and modify this file in any which way that they want. Uh, and finally, if the user would like to change their password, they could go ahead and hit Save New Password. Problem solved. Finally, if you go ahead and close out of the application, it's actually still running in the background. We know that Java sometimes has slow response rates when you're starting it from scratch, uh, especially on certain Java implementations, for example, on OS X. So we've gone ahead and kept the process running in the background. I haven't launched anything new. All I've done is I've opened up the sign-in screen. Let me log in with a standard username. So this is a standard user, not an administrator. And you'll see that some of the panes have been locked down simply because normal users should only be able to view their schedule as well as modify their own settings. I hope this uh, was educational. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at jgbryden at gmail.com or jbryden at cores2.com. Thank you.